everything around you is collecting data either about you, about your purchases, in data about something. Once you are into technology, SQL should be a language that you should be learning. And with all this data being collected, there is a high demand for database administrator, data analysis, data engineers, data scientists. There would always be a need for someone to handle this mass volume of data. So for today's video, I'm going to start off with the basic of database. What is a database? Why do we need a database? What do you put inside of a database? We're going to start off with the definition. What is a database? So in the simplest form, a database is a collection of related information in a single repository. So a repository is a place where you store something. So a repository can be a phone book, a shopping list, customer's information, um, a file cabinet, anything where you take some type of data and you store it in there. Think of database as an organized collection of data. For example, if you have customer, you would have their customer last name, probably their first name, their email address, their order, the products that they order, or their payment information. The data in the database is stored in the form of table. So think of a table as an Excel file. You have your columns and under each columns, you have rows of related data. When you're inputting data in a database or when you're inputting data in a table, the data is inputted in index format. So index is like an array. So it starts from zero, one, two, three, four, five, and up. There are lots of ways you can store data. So you can store data in a notebook. You can store data as text. You can store data in a file cabinet. You can store data in an Excel file. You can also store data in a database. Now places where you can store data, you can store your data on the hard drive in that computer. You can store data on an external drive as well. You can also store data on the cloud. An example of data on the cloud is Google Drive or you have the Microsoft Suite that gives you Excel, PowerPoint, Word. You can also store a bunch of data on there as well. Now, what type of information would you store in a database? So you would store information like customer's information or customer's data. Customer data would be something like their address, their name, their preference, their order, their shipping information, account information. Those are information you would store in a customer database. And next type of data that will be stored in databases will be business data. So for example, business data will most likely be the, the store number or the store ID. You also have um, the prices of stuff, the inventory, the manufacturer, or anything that have to do with a business or with the business will be stored in a business database. The last thing that you probably would want to store in a database will be relational data, like which location has which products. That's an example of relationship database or which store did that customer purchase this product. So the question will be for most people who do not have an idea of what a database is, they will probably ask what's the purpose of a database when I can store my data in an Excel file or in a file cabinet why would I want to build a database? Now, here are some reasons why most companies would choose a database over storing the data in an Excel file or in a file cabinet. When you have a large amount of customers or clients, you may want to create a database for storing, retrieving, and managing that large volume of data. So think about if a company like Tesla stores all of their data or their customer's data in an Excel file. Think about if um, H&M, if you sign up for some type of membership in H&M, you input your last name, first name, date of birth. Think about all the customer's information stored in an Excel file. 
it's not really doable. So it, it, they cannot, um, it's not fast for them to retrieve millions of data from an Excel file or, or from a file cabinet. So it will make more sense for a, a large company at that to create a database to manage their data. So creating a database will be the first step. Once you finish creating your database, then you would have to think about tables. When you're creating a database, you have to think about what type of data you're storing in the database and create a table or create tables in that database based on the information that you have. So if you build in a table for customers, you probably would want to create a table customer information, or you probably want to create a table for products. You may not want to create a table for the order. You may want to create a table for the shipping information. So tables is a collection of related data entry and a table consists of a set of rows and columns. Now, every column holds a specific information about every record in the table. So once you establish your column names, then you would want to input data in the table. And when the data is inputted in the table, it is called a record. So a record is also called a row. So each row um, would give you information of individual customer or individual entries. Most of the companies that have a database will have a relational database. And again, a relational database means that all of the information in that database is related to each other somehow. So all of the tables have related data. So a relational database defines as database relationship in the form of tables. When you want to create a database, you would need a database management system to do that. Sometimes you would see the full name database management system, or you would see DBMS and DBMS just means database management system. There are lots of database management system you can use out there. Some of the top ones are Oracle, MySQL, MongoDB, SQL Server, Postgres, Microsoft Access, IBM. So those are the top database management system that is out there right now. And then you have RDBMS and RDBMS is one of the best management, best database management system you can use, and that's what most of the companies use. So RDBMS stands for Relational Database Management System. RDBMS is a program used to manage or maintain relational database. So RDBMS uses SQL query to access data inside of the database. So there are some database that accept SQL or you can do no SQL. That's the difference between no SQL and SQL. No SQL is unstructured. So the database don't have to be related at all. It can manage unrelated database. Whereas SQL operates on, or it works on database that is relational. So a structured database. So what's the difference between DBMS and RDBMS? In DBMS, the data is stored as a file, whereas RDBMS, the database is stored in forms of tables. What is the difference between data and information? So data is the raw unorganized facts that needs to be processed. Data is the building blocks for information. Now, when it comes to information, information is the result of the processed data. So after you break down your information or you pull apart the information and you, uh, you saw employees in one side and then you put customers on another side, then you have all the information about the customers. Now you have all the information about the employees. Database redundancy is something you will see when you are managing or handling database. Now data redundancy can be good and it also can be bad. So they are, it's negative and 
positive about data redundancy. So to get into the definition of data redundancy, data redundancy refers to storing pieces of the same data in two different tables. Sometimes data redundancy can be inside of the exact same table, and that's something you do not want when you are a database administrator or when you are creating a database or putting data into a database. You never want data redundancy when it comes to data inside of a table. So data redundancy means repeating data. For example, if I have information about Carl Jones, I would have information about Carl Jones in probably the customer table, and I would have the exact same information about Carl Jones in another table. And you don't want that type of redundancy inside of a database. So that's a form of normalization. You do not want redundancy or repeating data. The more data you repeat, the larger your tables will become, the more disk space you will take up in your database. So that was the disadvantage or the negative about data redundancy. Now, data redundancy can also be positive or a good thing. Why would you want any type of redundancy when you have a database or when you're dealing with a database? A good reason to have data redundancy is for recovery purposes. If you have worldwide customers, for example, one country's database go down, you can pull data from a different country or from a different data center. That way you will always be up and running. So if one data center shut down because of power issue, then another data center will be up. You can grab data from that other data center so the customers can still do their work or do whatever they want to do. Another reason to have data redundancy is backup of data. So let's say something happened to that data center, it caught on fire or you lost all your data, uh, some type of flooding, storm. So if you store your data in a different area or a different place, you can get a backup of that data from that different data center. Another reason why data redundancy is good is for faster access of data. For example, you may want your database to be closer to certain customers. So for example, you may want a data center in Toronto. You may want a data center in New York for the people in New York. You may want a data center in Vancouver for the people in Vancouver. So you would have different data centers. That way the data can be accessed fast. Another reason for data redundancy is to update data easily. When you are working with database, you may come across obstacles that can prevent you from doing your job as a database administrator. When you're creating your database and you managing your database, adding data to your database, you may come across some errors and those errors are called anomalies. So anomalies means irregularities or inconsistencies. So anomalies are different from the usual. When you are a database administrator, three types of anomalies you will run into. You will run into insertion anomalies and insertion anomalies means that you're trying to input data in a column that does not have the same data type or that specific data type that you created for the column. So for example, if you created a column for a customer and you have their first name and last name, that is uh, a string and you're expecting some type of string to go into that column. However, when you're doing the insertion, the system is picking up numbers or decimals or pictures. So that will prevent you from inserting data into the table. The second anomaly is deletion anomaly. So for example, if you're trying to delete a data from a row, but you have a primary key and a foreign key. So now if you link the two tables together and you're trying to delete certain information from a row, it kind of, it will prevent you from deleting that information because another table is depending on that data. So that's a form of deletion anomalies. The third type of anomalies is update anomalies. When you're updating the tables, you put in 
wrong data type into that column that can be a form of update anomalies database design and that's a topic that most of the designers have to think about when they get the job as a database administrator how do i design my database what is database design so database design is the organization of data according to the data model the designer must build a database based on the data that is being stored and how the data is interrelated for example when you build in a database you have to think about the customer and the order or you may have to think about the shipping and the address you will also want to think about the customer and the address then you also have order and products so for each products that you order will probably go in a specific order and you would get an order number for all the products that you ordered now there are five rules for building an efficient database so designing an efficient database or a useful database is the matter of following the proper process and the proper process include these phases so one you have to analyze and identify the purpose of your database what's the reason for your database why are you building that database so if you build in a database for school and the school tells you that you have to build that database for students that is the purpose of your database you build in a database to store students record the next thing you would have to do as a database administrator is organizing your data into tables for example the student information will be in one table their course will probably be in another table. Their grades will probably be in another table and so on. The next thing you want to do is turn the information into columns. After you create your tables, you have to put that data into the specific columns. Then the fourth rule is specifying the primary key and creating relationships. So when you specify a primary key, then you create a foreign key to join those tables together. Then the fifth rule is normalization. So you have to apply normalization rules to standardize the table. And normalization means you taking out anything that does not belong in the table are uh, you breaking down your tables into smaller tables or, and linking your tables together so that's a form of normalization which I'm going to get to in a little bit when you designing a database these are things you have to keep in mind so you have to design your database for performance is my database going to still be running if, if there's a lot of people querying the database you also have to design your database for scalability if more data is loading into your table for example if you load a hundred data it should still perform the same as when you uploading a million data or two million data so you have to build your database with scalability in mind also extendability availability is my database will always be available there is no downtime portability portability is something that you have to think about sometimes you have old database can that old database be portable or ported into a new database can that database be portable on different platforms for example can i take my database from a windows platform and put it on a um, Mac OS platform or on a Linux platform so that's portability can my database be portable can it join with another database those are things you have to keep in mind when you're designing your database now here is an example of how a table will look in a database now this is not normalized properly by looking at it first of all we have customer table and we have a product table and an order table now this database or this tables can be normalized some more for example we can probably strip out address and create an address table and doing that is a form of normalizing your database the columns in a table looks exactly like an excel file 
Now, when you're designing your database, you have to keep some things in mind. And the important things about a database is knowing your the difference between the rows and the columns. So each table in your database consists of columns and rows. So a row is a record in your database. For example, if I have information about customer and I want to get some information about John, John's information is a record inside of the database. So a row is called a record. A record includes information about someone, a product or something specific. Whereas a column contains single type information that appears in each row. For example, you have name or address. That's a column in your table. And each column contains information about the row. When you are building tables or creating tables in a database, the things you have to keep in mind is the data type. What type of data I expected that uh, specific column to hold. For example, the name will probably need a varchar or a string data type. Um, you want age to probably be an int. You probably want price to be a decimal. So in order to keep data consistent, assign the appropriate data type to each column. Here are some common data types that is used in data or in tables creation. You have int, floats, chars, varchars, and decimals. Now we're coming into normalization and database normalization is a step or a process that you have as a database creator or a database administrator will have to go through. So normalization is the process of organizing data in a database. So normalization includes creating table and establishing relationships in the tables. When normalizing tables, repeating data known as data redundancy should not be in a table. So as I said before in, in my previous slides, I went over data redundancy and I explained the advantage and disadvantage of redundant data. However, in a table, you do not want to have repeating data. Repeating data can waste or take up disk space. So the first thing you want to do when you are putting data into the tables, you want to make sure that you're not inputting uh, duplicate data. If the data exists in more than one place, you would have to make changes in other places. So that's why you do not want to have, you do not want to have data redundancy because if you change data in one table, you may have to change the data in a different table. Let's say some employee got fired and you want to take that employee off the record. Then once you take that employee off the current database that you're working with, then the backup database, you would have to go and remove that employee as well. So rules, there are rules to normalization and each rule is called a normal form. So you guys may see this a lot uh, not when you are working with data or creating any database or being a database administrator, you would see rules about normal forms. So for example, you have first normal form, second normal form, third normal form. So the first rule is observed if your database is in the first normal form. So you have first normal form, which is 1NF. Then you have second normal form, which is 2NF. And you have third normal form, which is 3NF. So first normal form is eliminating repeating groups in individual tables. So you want no data redundancy in your tables or in your database. So that's rule number one. Number two, you have to create a separate table for each related data. So if we're going back to 
if you have a table, for example, for customers and you have their address in the customer table, then you may want to strip down the, the tables and put address, give address its own table. And then you have the customer table with just first name, last name, age, date of birth, their email, and also the customer ID. You also have to identify each set of related data with keys. So you have to know your primary keys, your foreign keys, your candidate keys, your composite keys, being a database admin. Then in second normal form, the first rule should be that your tables are already in first NF or first normal form. Then you have to create separate tables for set of values that apply to multiple record. So for example, if customer address in a shipping warehouse or in the shipping table, the address will be needed in the customer table. However, it can also be needed in the shipping order or invoice table. Third NF is removing transitive dependencies in a relational table. So for example, you want to remove any values or any columns that depends on a next column in that same table. So now we're moving on to keys and keys play a very important role in relational database. It is used to uniquely identify a record or row of data from the table. It is used to establish and identify relationships between tables. So the keys that are used in a database is the primary key, foreign key, candidate key, composite key, alternate key, super key, and artificial key. So let's take a look at primary key. Primary key is the first key used to identify one and only one instance of an entity uniquely. So for example, if you have, uh, if you have uh, information about John, you will give John a unique ID and that ID would give you all the information about John. So example, let's say we have two John Smith in our um in our database you would give the first john smith an id of 102 which would be the primary key and you would give the next john uh, an identity of 1 110 or 100 or 198 so the primary key would uniquely identify which john smith that you want to pull up so a foreign key are the columns of a table used to point to the primary key in another table. So for example, we have the employee table and we have the departments table. Now in the employee table, we have the foreign key department ID. And in the department table, we would have the primary key department ID. So you take the primary key of one table and you add that primary key in another table. Now, when you put that ID in another table, it automatically becomes the foreign key. Now, the values for department ID in the employee table and the values for department ID in the department table must be the same. Now we're moving along to what is SQL. When you finish creating your database, you have all your tables, you normalize your database, you add all your keys. Now your database is ready to go. You would use the language called SQL, that which stands for structured query language. You will use this language to query your database. So SQL is a language designed for managing and manipulating data that is stored in a relational database management system. If you do not have a relational management database system, if your database is unstructured, then you would want to use no SQL. So that's it for now for this video. The next couple video or the next set of videos that I'm going to do on database, I would get more into the different keys. When do you need a foreign key? When do you need a primary key and a composite key? Also unique 
use the unique constraint. So for now, this is part one of data, exploring data, getting into a database administrator, the fundamentals of data and the importance of a database. Now that's it for this video. And if you have learned something from this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. I will see you guys in the next video.